four o'clock, so I think we'll get started with our um, joint meeting between the Finance Committee and the Committee on C Community Resources. Uh, th this is February 8th virtual meeting, and you are being audio and video recorded, recorded and we're going to first start off with a roll call for finance. Okay. <coughs> Councillor Maori. Here. Councillor Labarge. Here. Councillor Moulton. Here. Here. Oh dear. And Councillor Nash. Nash. Here. Okay. So we have a quorum in finance, uh, even for our very short meeting, because we only have one agenda item, item uh, 23.241, in order to approve a certified project and TIF for property within the Con Street Economic Opportunity Area. And that's actually been withdrawn. And so I would, uh, I'm not going to hold any kind of public comment because of that, um, but we are going to move right into, we'll close the finance committee meeting and we will uh, move right into community resources and Chair Perry can, can address uh, when he wants public comment to happen then. So um, with that item withdrawn, I believe there's no other items, correct? Uh, finance, yeah. And so we can just, uh, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, roll call, please. Um, okay, Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. And Councillor Nash. Yes. Okay, so finance is adjourned. That might be one of our shorter meetings. And <laughs> <laughs> I will well, pass. Yeah. Yes, I will pass the baton over to uh, Chair Perry at Community Resources. Well, thank you, Councilor Maori. Uh, I'm gonna follow up with the world's fastest finance meeting uh, and call the February 8th special meeting of Community Resources to order. Laura, roll call, please. Councilor Perry. Here. Councilor Elkins. Here. Councilor Jarrett. Here. And Councilor Maori. Here. All right. Well, we do have space for public comment. I know that some people may have showed up for the order that was withdrawn. Um, you know, if anyone has would like to comment on that, I would hope that people could keep their comments to that under two minutes. Uh, if there are no comments for that item, we will move along to the next item. And I don't see any hands. Just waiting a second. No, it's only one page. All right, well, that, <laughs> oh, I know I see Claudia Lefko. Claudia. Sorry, mm. sorry. Uh, I just have a question. Are you going to talk about the hotel now? No, or is that, that the one that's withdrawn? That is the item that has been withdrawn. Oh, alas, okay. So can I, I can't comment on this anymore. All right, is it going to come back up to the agenda? Why has it been withdrawn? Can I ask? I, um, Councilor Nash or Council President Nash seems to have his hand up. So let's see what he has to say. Uh, yeah. oh. oh, you got muted somehow. There we go. Hello. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, we could read into the record uh, the statement from the mayor about this being withdrawn and that, um, that per uh, comment for community resources. I'm, it's fine for anybody to comment on anything they wish, um, but this item won't be discussed in either meetings. The item because being the hotel. Being the, the, the tip for the hotel. But Claudia, you, you are free to discuss your ideas related to the tip for the hotel for public comment, but these committees won't be discussing it because that item is no longer uh, 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 legislation that is being proposed by the applicant and the mayor. Oh, well, so so does this mean the hotel proposal as was submitted is off the table now? That's exactly what it means. Oh, wow. Okay, well, and since I, sorry to bother your time, but since I have the time, um, just to say that I tuned in because I'm, my concern is that we have uh, we are continuing to have development in the city, and we don't seem to be asking for the developers to be giving back anything to the city. And I've often talked about that famous now daycare center that we put at the bus garage. 
I don't know how that happened, but it seemed the city at one point had this requirement that for development, if you were going to um, get some sort of benefit from the city, you had to give back to the city, some sort of community, common good kind of idea. And my concern with what's happening right now, we just gave $500,000 for the St. John Cantius. Now this uh, hotel wanted a tax break. What are we asking for people to give back to us? Like, what do we actually need in the city that we could, that the, the people who are coming here to, to do business, what can they offer us? What can they provide for us? Because we have these vast needs in the city. And it seems to me one way we could help meet them is by asking people who are going to make money off of us to contribute to the common good. So that's my uh, question. I don't know what happened to that idea that this would be part of a development package, but uh, if that's uh, not on the table anymore, I think we should consider it. So thanks for letting me take your time, but that's my concern. Thanks. Thank you, Claudia. I see no other hands raised. Uh, so wait, there's a, is Deidre, are you Deidre's phone hand is up. Perfect. Okay. If let's ask you to unmute. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, you know, I'm using a screen reader, so my phone is noisy when I try and find the mute button, which is why I stayed unmuted. Um, I, I just want to say that there's, you know, I'm often on these meetings, and I am a blind participant, so I'm glad that worked. That I turned the video on. Um, and waved and you saw it. Um, so I just wanna make you all aware um, that if there's any visual stuff that's presented to, to please give um, those of us who can't see some verbal description, that's all. Okay, okay. thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna try and unmute now, or you can mute me. You wanna mute me? I'll mute you. Thank you so much. All right, uh, with that being said, it looks like we are moving to uh, item four on the agenda, no, sorry. That is um, item eight, which is item 23.242 in order for legislate, special legislation relative to requesting seven licenses for the sale of all alcoholic beverages to be drunk on the premises. It was referred to community resources on February 2nd, 2023. Um, I know that we have a number of folks here to discuss this. I see Amy K. Helene. I wanna thank everyone uh, who is here to join us to speak on this. Um, with that being said, I will first turn it over to the mayor to see if she has anything to say. Sure, thank you so much, Councillor Perry. Um, uh, thank you, councillors, for giving us an opportunity to talk about this a bit more in depth um, in uh, your committee. Um, so really the goal of this legislation that we talked about the other night is to support Northampton's role in the Valley as a hub for restaurants and businesses. Um, so it's to support current long running businesses here um, and to be able to attract some new restaurants. We know how critical it is to attract new businesses and to be able to fill some of the empty storefronts, um, particularly the restaurant storefronts we have. And now more than ever, we're hearing from existing and also hopeful restaurateurs that to be able to make it, they, um, they really feel like an all alcohol license is necessary. Um, a healthy and thriving restaurant scene is, um, is, not, is critical for all business. So it's critical also for our retail businesses and our entertainment businesses. Um, People, you know, are are drawn to restaurants. If there were um, consumer behavior studies done, sort of towards the beginning of the pandemic, we didn't know it was beginning at that point. Um, that and asking people sort of what they were most looking forward to coming back to, and um, a, a majority of them responded that they, um, the first thing that they would do after they felt like it was safe would would be to go. And, and eat in a restaurant. Um, they are, restaurants uh, of course create jobs and, um, and support the local economy in many ways. Um, they're also important community partners or can be. We saw that with our restaurants during the pandemic um, where so many stepped up and helped feed first responders um, 
And as we all know, restaurants are really important social gathering places for folks um, and are just sort of critical for the life of, of a community or a neighborhood. Um, so back to why this feels, I think for, for um, many rest, current restaurants and people who are interested in, in starting one, uh, such a critical need at this moment to have an all alcohol license um, is that as I think we've all experienced, sort of the economics of food have changed a bit. Um, food prices have jumped considerably in the last 12 months um, and other costs have risen. So this is um, this is something, this, there's sort of been a change in sort of the balance for restaurants um, in terms of how they can make revenue. Um, and, I, and I really feel like one of the critical, or, or maybe, the easiest way to see how potentially um, this has changed is to look at the restaurants that went for the um, the license that was just um, that we just um, not auctioned. What's the term I'm looking for? Someone help me. Lottery. Lottery. Thank you. That was just we just had a lottery for one of these. Um, one of these licenses. And so the four restaurants that put their names forward to be part of this lottery were all long-standing Northampton restaurants. So the, pers the business that won it was Paul and Elizabeth. Paul and Elizabeth has been in business in the same spot um, for uh, almost as long as I've been alive. Um, I think they're four years younger than I am. So they've been in that spot in Thorns um, since 1978. Uh, the other three were Teapot and Dirty Truth and Jake's. All I used to go to Jake's has changed ownership, but I used to go to Jake's when I was in college. Um, Teapot's been around forever. Dirty Truth's been around for, I think, over 15 years. These are all longstanding, successful restaurants who clearly felt that this was a critical component for them to now have an all alcohol license, which is why they, they entered that lottery. So, um, uh, so that's, I think I'll start with saying that um, the request had been to um, invite public safety and public health to come speak um, for the city. So as you can see, Chief Casper is here. And um, also, I think I saw Commissioner O'Leary. So I would kind of pass it over to them, um, if that's okay, Councillor Perry. That and um, okay, great. Um Chief Casper, if you want to start. Sure, good afternoon, all good to be with you. I don't have a lot to say on this other than I, I don't see any significant public safety issues with it. Um, you know, from a police perspective, we are pretty attentive in our police department um, to keep an eye on impaired operation. And we sometimes work with um, the Alcohol Beverage Control Commission to do checks. And I think we have a good track record here in our community uh, keeping things in order around alcohol and licensing. So I don't have any concerns about this uh, from a public safety perspective. Cool, I see Commissioner O'Leary as well. Yes, Commissioner O'Leary. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for inviting me here today. Um, I too uh, don't oppose the, um, you know, having these extra licenses for these restaurant on-site consumption businesses. Um, we have been, you know, licensing alcohol establishments for many years, and we know how to do it. We, for example, we know that state laws aren't the solution as it sits very differently for a town like Northampton than for a more marginalized community where there might be a glut of alcohol premises and bars that aren't very desirable. Um, so we have studies that show differential impacts of off-premises versus on-premise -pre outlets, alcohol outlets and teens, where off-premise tends to be tied to increased use, where on-premise isn't. So we have that data that um, that that supports, you know, on-premise is 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 okay. And um, I, I'm not going to pretend or speak to the economic value because Mayor Sharia did an excellent job on that, but. At the end of the day, we also have, um, we can measure the impacts of alcohol. We have um, 
studies also um, and, and strategy, public health strategies to help combat, you know, overconsumption of alcohol. So it's been around long enough where we really are doing a good job to support a community to have on-site consumption in a restaurant setting and also to be able to provide um, public health education to those who might need it because of overuse. So again, not in opposition of it. I was on, I was, do any of the counselors have any questions for the mayor or our public health officials? Mm. Councilor Jerry. Thank you, Councilor Perry and everyone else. Um, I, let's see, I had a question about um, the economics. So I appreciate the sections that basically remove it from the market in that, you know, you'll give out the license and when <laughs> you're done, you turn it back in, it'll be given out to someone else. Um, I guess the question is, will it devalue a business since only a portion of it can be sold before you have to turn the license in so essentially you're lo you're locked into your your you know your current ownership structure um, unless you give up the license is that a concern at all um i'm sorry could you i'm not sure i understood that question what do you mean by locked into the structure so the, the order has, or the legislation has a provision that if more than 49% of the business is sold, then you must return the license. Mm -hmm. um, and so a business essentially, you, know, you can only sell half of your business mm -hmm. before you uh, lose that license. Um, does that devalue a business? I know there was some concern about if, if you, in, when we were talking about the cannabis businesses, if, if you couldn't have sold, I think it was resolved, but if, if there was concern that if you couldn't have sold a business, it would, it would devalue it. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I just wanted, you know, maybe 50% is still enough for a business owner to, or maybe a business owner is just wanting to stay in business in, in that current ownership structure, but just wanted to, to make sure that that thinking, that, that was thought about in the, in the process. It, we certainly haven't heard any concerns or complaints about it, um, but I, I saw Alan, you. Yeah, I mean, the, the goal here is to not make this be have value in the secondary market, to not add these licenses to that undesirable creation of a financial institution that does not benefit fits the residents of Northampton by making these return to the city the second they close. Because the truth is the liquor license should not contribute to the value of any restaurant. Mm -hmm. They should all be able to get them when they need them. And they should, that it should just be up to Northampton who has a liquor license because we know how to manage that. And so we're trying to not further compound the problem by creating more licenses that accrue value on private markets that do not contribute value to our residents. So that's what that are depreciable as a financial asset that that. Yes, that's why the goal here is to make sure they don't become part of the secondary market and none of them should be. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you. Um, I get I have a question about uh, I guess this is for Commissioner O'Leary. The, and I appreciate the data um, and, and I may uh, ask you uh, for some of that afterwards. Um, the issue of bars versus restaurants, because it, it, my understanding is that this will, there's no, th this is a, a available, these will be available to a restaurant or they will be available to a bar. There won't be a differentiation. Although most bars serve food these days. So I'm not sure what the differentiation exactly is. And maybe someone could speak to that. Um, but the, is, is there, and so, and, is there any data that's specific to bars as opposed to restaurants regarding um, the, the density or the, the number of bars and, and concerns about youth use? Or I saw one study, a potential domestic violence increase. Um, so if, if you could speak to that. 
That was directed to Commissioner O'Leary, yes? Yeah. Hi, I couldn't find any research in the differential between a bar setting and a restaurant setting. The only thing that I could find was the differential between on-site consumption versus a package store where it's off-site consumption, um, having a link to an increase of youth use. Um, I'm, I'm sure we could look into it a little further and get you information down the road, but nothing that I there's nothing that I have today that I could cite friends for you. Great, thank you. I saw the council of the bars had her hand up. Thank you. Um, Mayor, how many are we looking at full licensing here now? Are we looking for these licenses for, yeah, for the these? So they're all they're all alcohol licenses. Is that what you mean? Yes. Yes. So these are all alcohol. Um, for, yes, for these seven. So we would be for three of them, we would be going back to those to three of the restaurants that had been in the lottery. Um, and so they they already have a, a wine and malt license. So this would just convert. So it's not it's um, it would be converting their wine and malt to an all alcohol. So it's it's actually would be four new licenses, but three would be converted to a different kind of license. So does the price of the license increase, Mayor? The is the you mean is there a difference between the cost for a wine and malt versus yeah. an all alcohol? Yes. And um, a full license. Yes. So yes, an all alcohol is a um Annie, could you send me the amount? Yeah. So all alcohol is two thousand two hundred and fifty nine dollars, yeah. and wine and malt is one thousand five hundred and fifty. Right, annually. Yeah. The you talked about four in the lottery, correct? We had Jake's, the teapot, and what was the other two? Um, so Paul and Elizabeth won um, that lottery, and then um, the other. So it was Jake's. Teapot and the Dirty Truth. Thank you. Welcome. Council Mayori. Now I feel hungry that we're talking about all that good food. <laughs> um, I was, I'm just curious about, you know, during the pandemic, I don't know if it was a pandemic thing. Maybe you could speak to delivery um, of alcoholic drinks, you know, with food from restaurants. Was that just a pandemic? Uh, era, I can't, or is that, um, I don't, uh, I'm not clear on how, if that's um, part of the licensing. That was a pandemic yeah. um, provision from the state. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sure. Um, so, Councillor Perry, if uh, I, I see there are a couple of hands as well, and there might be some um, public comments. Um, we also have, there's, we have um, a testimonial that Alan would like to read whenever you feel it most appropriate. That is from someone who actually was, wanted to uh, start a restaurant here in Northampton and didn't because they weren't, um, we couldn't guarantee them a license. So I just wanted to make you aware of that whenever you feel like you'd like us to share that. Perfect. Um, I think we can, let's share the testimonial and then I know that Heather and Amy both have their hands up. So we'll go to that after. Alan. Great. Okay, so um, this uh, comes from uh, Northampton resident, Polly Norman. Oh, and I also wanna say that um, Kyle from The Dirty Truth is here and, and would love to share. And we also have Vince Jackson uh, and Amy Kaling who we asked to uh, attend as uh, uh, support for the mayor's uh, position. But let me read, uh, Polly couldn't be here today, sadly, because she had a, a meeting uh, at her kid's school. But she says, 
Thank you for the invitation to speak at the Joint City Council Committee on Finance Community Resources. Oh, I'm sorry, I, she, this meeting. Uh, unfortunately, I'm, I'm unable to attend in person, so I'm grateful for the opportunity to have this story read on my behalf. This fall, I explored opening a restaurant in downtown Northampton and decided against it because I could not obtain an all-alcohol liquor license. You are likely familiar with the many challenges our restaurant have faced in recent years, staffing shortages and wage increases, soaring food costs, supply issues, and smaller customer base later in the evenings. While considering this venture, I created three different budget models, one conservative, one moderate, and one ambitious based on the number of covers or meals served in a restaurant and interviewed several area restaurant owners. The owners validated my theory that there are a certain number of customers that prefer to visit restaurants that serve liquor. So without that license, you are using a losing potential diners. They all also echoed the fact that liquor has by far the greatest profit margin of any, any goods sold in a restaurant. It also has the least waste or the longest shelf life and is the least labor intensive aspect of the food business. This information prompted me to build some additional financial models. Each of those three budgets I mentioned previously with beer and wine sales only and only with beer, wine and liquor. After examining all of these examining all of these figures, the only two models that weren't in the red were the moderate model with liquor and not by much and the ambitious model with liquor. It was evident that it would be irresponsible to lease the space without a liquor license. I have owned my own businesses. I have I do have restaurant experience, have leadership training and experience and could have funded the venture on my own. Yet I couldn't make the space I was looking at that it was a space that did not require a build out and was nearly already fully equipped work. For someone considering a space that would require more of an initial investment or build out, the liquor license challenge would be even more limiting. Please strongly consider pursuing the additional liquor licenses for existing restaurants who want them and new restaurants that are hoping to hoping to open in our city. And just, I, I won't go into it here, but I also, for the mayor for this, did a lot of research to, to numerically back up a lot of the points uh, Polly makes in that argument, uh, which we could share with the council as well. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. All right, let's uh, move towards some of these hands here. I know that Amy, Kay, Helen, you had your hand up first. You can put it down, put it back up. If you want to pop in. The mayor was doing such a great job. I was beginning to feel like my hand was irrelevant, but I'm here and I wrote out some comments, so I'm going to share them. Um, I am the executive director of the Downtown Northampton Association, and I'm here to support the city and speak out in favor of obtaining the additional all alcohol licenses. I wanted to start by being fully transparent and let you know that the restaurant community is not uniform in their thinking around this, that I've had two restaurants reach out to me upset that I am speaking up in favor of these licenses. Um, one of whom feels that my position is a slap in the face to all of the hard work and hard earned dollars that he has invested in his license. Um, and he would tell you that there are a multitude of other things that the city could be doing to better attract restaurants rather than obtaining liquor licenses. These are two restaurant owners that I have tremendous respect for. They're businesses that have been home to some of my most favorite memories over the past several decades. And they represent an important part of our restaurant community. I take their words to heart and I value their experience and expertise. And I'm saying all of this so you know that I am not speaking out in favor of these licenses on a whim. Um, this is the first time that I've publicly come out and talked, other than last week's city council, in favor of over quota liquor licenses. And I truly believe that this moment in time in downtown Northampton is different than the past. We have existing restaurants for whom obtaining an all alcohol license may make the difference between staying in Northampton or not. We've lost restaurants who've looked for space here in town, of which I might point out we have plenty, but they've only been able to make their financial numbers work, as you just heard about, Polly, with an all-alcohol license. And if you've ever been to one of the lottery drawings for an over-quota license, we have this Hunger Games-type system, which, while objectively fair, leaves aspects of the financial future of the participating restaurants up to the whim of whatever ball is pulled out of a basket. It's a system that prohibits productive future planning on the part of restaurants seeking a license. It creates a divide between restaurants based on who has what type of all alcohol license. It does nothing to attract a restaurant to town who believes they need an all, all alcohol license and it does nothing to boost economic development. Of course, obtaining these additional licenses are not a silver bullet that will magically fill empty storefront, every empty storefront, but it's something that we can try and it's a partial fix to a system that's proven problematic in the past. 
and that's prohibiting economic growth in the present. I did speak with one longtime downtown commercial landlord who believes that additional licenses will make it easier to lease his vacant restaurant space. I also talked with an existing restaurant owner who purchased an all alcohol market on the open, who purchased an all alcohol liquor license on the open market, who is supportive of the notion of obtaining additional over quota licenses. They believe that we need to do something to attract new restaurants to town, and this is one tool that we have to do that. I've also heard from existing restaurants who've been unable to obtain all alcohol licenses despite their best efforts. And this offering would make a huge difference in how they run their restaurant, what they could provide and what their financial picture might look like. The city's not seeking 50 over quota licenses. It's not seeking to opt out of the license system altogether. It's just trying to create a little additional economic opportunity. The additional seven licenses, if three of them go to the existing um, interested restaurants leaves only four available to incentivize restaurants to town. This it's four. Um, and so while I don't think this will magically fix empty storefronts or um, diminished foot traffic downtown, leaving this economic development tool on the table now when there's momentum, legislative enthusiasm, existing restaurants who could benefit, and a wealth of rent empty restaurant spaces, I think would be irresponsible and short-sighted. And I really hope that you support this measure. Happy to answer questions too. Thank you, Amy. Uh, Heather, you've had your hand up. I recognize you here. Hi, thank you. Um, my name's Heather Warner. Um, I am speaking on behalf of myself as a resident. Um, I'm actually no longer working with the Spiffy Coalition, although I partner with them and I'm on their steering committee. Um, I am, I'm, I'm here today just to say, you know, the same information that we know about um, outlet density that we've talked about in detail with the cannabis caps, um, you know, also, you know, we, we have a much more researched, um, much more research on the, the connection between um, outlet density of alcohol and, and increased consumption of alcohol. And it, 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 you know, it can partly be youth and it can partly just be population level. Massachusetts actually has pretty good regulations in place um, regard, you know, regarding the three tier system and, um, um, uh, sorry, I'm drawing a blank, but um, we have a lot of good, good um, you know, taxation, other things and um, other countries in the world, you know, to try to decrease population level use, look to some of the um, tactics that we use to regulate alcohol. It's not just that, um, I don't know, it, it, it's, it's when you think of public health, for example, when the beer, when we, when there's been efforts to put one penny tax on beer, the beer industry has come out in force against it because they know that one penny, while it's not prohibitive to a person buying a beer, it will decrease population level use. And so I think when we look at the health of the community, we also do need to look at, you know, sort of population level health around, you know, um, alcohol consumption. And I really appreciate that everyone cares about downtown. And I just wish we could get more creative about how to make a vibrant downtown that doesn't just include substances. Um, as someone who visits restaurants here frequently, but I don't drink, you know, that isn't the only criteria for enjoying the downtown. Um, so I also just wanted to say, um, you know, I know this, I, I don't think we refer to this as increasing the cap on alcohol outlets. It's really over quota. And that's been allowed for a long time in Massachusetts. Towns can apply for over quota licenses, and we've done so in the past. Um, what is different, it seems like, is the wording related to, you know, having these licenses recycle. And I'm still trying to figure that out exactly. And so it just means that these seven licenses will recycle while the other ones will be still sold and, and so on. Um, so I'm, I'm still a little bit confused about how that works. And I can understand that restaurants would be pretty upset about their purchased valued license being devalued. I know from talking to someone in the Massachusetts Pack Package Store Association that, you know, Ma and Pa retail stores really count on that sale of their alcohol license as part of their retirement plan. 
that it's really important to them as part of their investment, like the way that we buy a house and then we expect to sell the house. Um, so I know that that must be an issue for some in the community. Um, I, I will, I do appreciate that um, Meredith O'Leary mentioned, you know, that there's a difference between retail and, you know, um, on-premise, you know, licenses. And so I am glad that this is restricted to on-premise. I do think that retail licenses are potentially more, would impact young people more to have more outlets of that, of, you know, package stores and that kind of thing. So I wouldn't want to increase those at all. Um, but I will say that in my experience working with um, Jody Casper and with other towns, young people do access alcohol through bars and restaurants. We've d seen that in the compliance activities that we've done. Um, and um, let me just see, <laughs> the last point was, um, I also know like that there is a social cost to increasing these licenses. And if we were to have seven new bars in our town, um, you know, I, I think we could see increases in potentially in violence or domestic violence or other social costs that come with increased alcohol use. Um, and I guess I would just say also that if we want to be responsible about how we are doing our alcohol, you know, regulation in our community, a lot of communities actually have licensing boards that have separate licensing authority around say, for example, requiring tips training for all, you know, employees that handle alcohol. Um, and there's other best practices, you know, that can happen within restaurant and bar settings um, to mitigate, you know, the, the impacts, the, the health impacts um, on our community. So, uh, you know, even while this, you know, whether this goes through or not, you know, I, I think there's ways that that we can't, we have to be thinking of in terms of public health and safety and not just about the economic bottom line and, and really thinking about what we want for our community and not just going for the, the dollars around, you know, alcohol and cannabis. Um, I think that's pretty much what I wanted to say, but I, I, the alcohol laws that we have in Massachusetts and locally, you know, really are beneficial and they really serve a purpose. And when, when, you know, people aren't aware of the value of like the three tier system where we separate, you know, the manufacturer from the, um, you know, the, the um, middle person from the retailer, you know, that in doing that, by having that three tier system, there's automatic quality control built in and there's automatic taxation built in in each of those steps. And so, you know, for example, because nobody wants tainted product, if you, the, the same person and, and entity can't own a manufacturer and a distributor and a retail in alcohol, that's not the way it is with cannabis. And it's problematic. They've undermined this three-tier system and they did it on purpose to make it easier for the cannabis industry. And so when well, we have these in place in Massachusetts, but there are big alcohol like total wine and more that are sweeping through and with with lobbyists to try to, you know, really undermine all these regulations. Um, even some of the, you know, we love our our local breweries, but many of them can sell their their brewery to Amheuser Busch. And, you know, in doing so, the big business then is able to evade the taxation between manufacturer and retail. And we, we lose a ton of taxes and, and other quality controls in doing that. So when we think about just like what is best for us in Northampton, I think we have to think much more deeply about why we have these regulations in place and what is at stake when we just, you know, easily say, let's just go around it. Let's just do something different. If we do so, have a bit of yeah. a time, so we can wrap it up. Okay, you. thank you. That's it. Thank you for, for speaking. Uh, Kyle. Hi, thanks. Um, thanks for having me here today. Um, it's great to hear everybody's perspective on this. Um, and I really value um, hearing hearing the different sides. Um, I personally grew up coming out here um, from central Massachusetts, um, moved away for a bit, came back, 
and now I've been working um, at the Dirty Truth for over 10 years, um, actually almost coming up on 12 years. So um, I would I would say that that I've I've seen I've seen many years, not as many as other restaurateurs, um, and I want to keep learning from them. So I really value their opinions. Um, but what I do see is where Northampton um, is the strongest is when we do come together um, as a community rather than try to see each other as competition that that could could hurt our bottom line. So um, I I am obviously. Um, um, a proponent for this uh, extension uh, of more license um, because I do feel like we are at a place where the community, um, the, the restaurant and the cultural side of our community um, can really benefit from that attraction, um, not only of new restaurants, but also workers within the industry um, of hospitality. Uh, there's there's obviously been a huge loss of candidates for even hiring people. That's been uh, one of the biggest struggles throughout the pandemic. and. Um, you know, my, my bar starting as a beer focused bar, we are now adding um, a stronger wine program that's starting to attract um, not only customers, but but staff. Um, and now with our, uh, we, we did get the cordials extension and even with, um, you know, six to nine months of this cordials program and the course program, we have started a cocktail program under uh, what we can legally do with the license and it has garnered a lot of attention. Um, I don't need to bore people with the the growth of the spirits um, industry, but that is now one of the biggest focuses. And I'm not going to, um, you know, harp on a beer and wine kind of losing that. But there is so much interest in the spirits industry that um, it is something that is very valuable for any restaurant and bar to be serving um, at its full capacity. Um, you know, as bluntly put, I can serve a 55% um, pour of chartreuse alcohol because it has enough sugar content, but I can't pour a 40% bourbon. There's a lot of oddities to the different laws. So um, I just think that, that at the end of the day, um, we shouldn't really be focused on um, us competing against each other or the safety, but really how we can continue to grow the community. Um, because again, we um, like the... Uh, the the board of health and our our um, safety departments have reiterated we have a lot of those uh, safety checks in place and we continue to to um, you know monitor those to create a safe environment but um, I think I think we just need to continue moving forward um, by by promoting uh, the restaurants to operate at their fullest um, and and again it's it. it it sadly comes down to the finances at the end of the day, but I think we can all agree that every restaurant has done its best when we've come together, like the Taste of Northampton or even the music festivals and music venues being open. Um, so we just need to continue to attract that kind of culture and success for our community. Thank you, Thank you. Uh, Vince. Uh, thank you, Councilor Perry. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Vince Jackson, the executive director of the Greater Northampton Chamber of Commerce. And by virtue, I am also the executive director of the Hampshire County Regional Tourism Council. So from that perspective, uh, I will be speaking in support of uh, today's legislation or proposed legislation. Um, last year, we tracked 1.6 million visitors to Hampshire County, 43% of those were uh, visitors to Northampton specifically. And uh, among all the visitors to Hampshire County, they spent $131 million. That's a 41% increase over 2021. And we know that there was a lot of pent up travel demand from the pandemic. And we were very pleased again that uh, Northampton saw spending 43% of that because we know that 43% of the visitors uh, visited uh, Northampton. And that put us at uh, about 70% of pre-pandemic visitation to um, Northampton and Hampshire County. And as part of uh, my role uh, as the executive director of the Tourism Council is to promote visitation and tourism. And I have to say, while I don't know what the 
uh, liquor license laws are in Boston and New York. Uh, those are the cities of origin for most of our uh, visitors. And I have to believe and on judgment think that those are progressive environments that people are coming to Northampton and they're coming for our restaurants, which are food uh, destinations. We have invested in signage right on I-91 that says we're the proud place, Northampton, of over 100 uh, food and beverage establishments, uh, as well as shops. But we have over 100 food and beverage uh, uh, establishments in Northampton alone. And another big part of the Chamber's work is to uh, make sure that we're creating economic opportunity and vitality uh, for any business and all businesses who want to take a chance on uh, building a business in our city. And therefore we want to try to uh, break down any barriers to that success and invite visitors to come for the reasons that we have to offer. Our great arts, music, culture, and entertainment, as well as our fine restaurants. And um, we do have an economic development committee. I do not speak on their behalf. It is a, a group of, 40 uh, strong stakeholders who are invested in our community in multiple ways. But I do know that we have a shared vision and a shared mission to uh, create a thriving economy and community. So from that perspective, I strongly support uh, this uh, proposal. Thank you. Thank you. And Claudia, I do see your hands up, but I'm gonna pause for a second. I was trying to recognize some of the um, people in the economic sector who were invited to speak. So we do have a limited amount of time. So before I try and get to you, I, I do wanna go back to uh, the Community Resources Committee and see if anyone has any questions um, for either Vince or Amy or someone like that. Councilors. Councilor Mayori. Really just want to thank everyone who spoke. It's been it's really valuable information and perspectives. Thanks to the chief, thanks to the commissioner, thanks to Mr. Jackson and, and Amy K. Helene as well. It's um it's it's very valuable information. So thank you. Anyone else from the community resources? No one I I right, Council Barge, I see you. I see you there waiting for our committee first. Council Barge, what do you have to say? Thank you. Um, is Meredith O'Leary still here? Yes. I would like to speak to her. I have one question for her, but I also want to thank everybody who spoke. Um, Vince Jackson, right down the line. And I really appreciated that. And very, very knowledgeable, even with Heather Warner. So Thank you, thank you, thank you. But there is one more question I need to ask Meredith. Hi there, Councilor. Hi, Meredith. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I have a question. Sure, certainly. Um, about the safety part of it with the Board of Health. Now, you must have a, a procedure of going in and checking all the restaurants and bars and so forth like that, correct? Correct. When, how do you do this? So we inspect our establishments twice a year. Um, so the things that we are looking for upon inspection are more about um, properly handling food items, properly serving, so there's no cross-contamination. Um, so is there something specific that you'd like to know? I was just wondering about increasing more licenses here in the city of Northampton, mm -hmm. right? Are mm -hmm. you part of that also going in to inspect? We would have to inspect them if there were to be more establishments to open up most, most definitely. Yep. Okay. That's all mm -hmm. I wanted to do. And we talk about, you know, when we talk about um, food safety, we also talk about, you know, I think Heather Warner had mentioned earlier about um, you're required to take a food protection class if you're going to own a business, but there's also requirements around tips and that's about serving alcohol safely too. Okay. Thank you so much, Meredith. Can, 
Councilor Perry, could I just piggyback on that since Meredith um, sort of started to make a, a clarification that I wanted to make um, after Heather's comments. Um, so the the very first regulation listed for the license commission um, is responsible liquor service certification. So there are four certifications that are needed to have a liquor license. One is TIPS, which Meredith just mentioned. So that's training for intervention procedures. Um, there's TAM, techniques of alcohol management. There's serve safe alcohol server training. Um, and there's beverage alcohol training um, as well. So those four certifications are needed um, to have a liquor license already in Northampton, which is um, something that uh, I think Ms. Werner was asking that we have, but we've had that I think since 1994. I'm well versed in many of those having done tips and serve safe myself a number of times. Um, again, in the interest of time, we do have a, a little bit of not much time left here. Uh, so I do want to see if any of the counselors on this committee have anything else to say. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to wrap this up sometime in the near future. So I unfortunately can't see anyone. My computer is frozen. Um, no. <laughs> Councillor Elkins, can you see anyone's hands? Give me my visual. Okay. Uh, Rachel's uh, raising her hand. Okay. Council Mayor. Yes. That's why I, I meant to mention that what I found actually very valuable was um, Commissioner O'Leary's distinction between retail and on-site exactly. uh, on-premises. And so that's that's an important distinction for me. Um, yes. So thank you for that. Okay. Claudia Lefko's hand is raised, Councillor Perry. I think you saw that before. I did. Uh, Claudia, if you could keep it within, I, I will recognize you if you can keep it within a minute or two. We're trying to. Yes, I'll be very quick. Um, I want to just second what Heather Warner has been talking about in terms of what the city looks like. Like maybe we'll get more restaurants, but do we need more restaurants? I mean, there are lots of other things to fill up empty storefronts with besides pot shops and restaurants. And I'm honestly feeling like out here, quote unquote, out here in the neighborhood that a lot of the emphasis has to do with visitors to the city, developers in the city, blah, 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 and that there's not much in, in it for the people in the neighborhoods. So I'm, I just want people to think more broadly about what economic development is beyond liquor and restaurants and liquor licenses. And that's my statement. Thanks for hearing me. Thank you. Uh, and I see other hands, but I, again, I'm going to say that I am going to move past this. We did have time for public comment and we are running short on time for this committee. The mayor has another commitment. Uh, so with that being said, we are charged with um, this community resources with referring this back to the full city council. So I am looking for a motion, unless there are any other discussions. I Again, I can't see if there's anyone there. So could... Uh, Garrick, I, I have my hand raised. All right, Council Elkins. Uh, so I would... Um, uh... I will only just briefly say that I'm fully in support of this measure. I think it's the most, the single most important thing that we can do to, to benefit and to um, uh, reverse some of the negative trends that are happening downtown. And, and I am, uh, uh, if, if we could get rid of the secondary market entirely for liquor licenses, uh, I, I, I would do it in a heartbeat. Um, so with that being said, I am of, uh, I would move that we move this back to the city council with a positive recommendation. There's a motion to put forth the positive and a second, I think from council mayor, I heard. Yes. All right, Laura. Sure. Um, Councillor Perry. Yes. Councillor oh, Elkins. Sorry, I have a dis uh, is there a discussion on that? Yes, there is a discussion. Sorry, I cannot. Councillor Jarrett. Yep. Um, yeah, thank, thanks everyone. Um, I uh, am also uh, feel good about voting with a positive recommendation at this time. I do have some more questions that I will uh, reach out to Commissioner O'Leary about just about some of those distinctions and, and looking and some of the data. But um, for, for this commission, 
I mean, for this committee, I, I feel comfortable with a positive recommendation. Thank you, Councilor Jarrett. Uh, Laura, is there anyone else with a hand up uh, from the committee? No. Yeah, thank you. All right, I think we do it all then. Okay, Councilor Perry. Yes. Councilor Elkins. Yes. Councilor Jarrett. Yes. And Councilor Maori. Yes. All right, well then that will move with a positive recommendation to the next city council meeting. I would like to thank everyone who joined us for this robust discussion. I wanna thank everyone in the city for their hard work. Um, you know, there's a lot of things to be done and this is, I think, a, a step in the right direction. With that being said, um, we have, there's no new business. So I am, I will entertain a motion to adjourn this. I'd move to adjourn. Second. All right, Laura, roll call. Okay. Laura's muted. Sorry about that. Councillor Perry. Yes. Councillor Elkins. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. And Councillor Maori. Yes. yes.